I want to show you one of the most interesting bodybuilders I have ever seen. This individual stands six foot four and weighs upwards of 250 pounds. He has bench pressed over 400 pounds, he claims to have 20 inch arms, and yet after all this, the craziest thing, the one thing which people find it very difficult to believe is that according to him, he has done this 100% naturally. And in this video, we- wait, shit, sorry, my bad. That's Arnold Schwarzenegger. This is the individual I am referring to. He goes by the nickname Shizzy, and he has quickly risen in popularity due to his fantastic but undoubtedly controversial physique, with many going as far as to call him the new natural Arnold. And over the last few years, especially with the rise of TikTok, I have noticed a lot more of guys like this. Young bodybuilders who've built phenomenal physiques, so much so that they've started to attract skepticism, and in some cases, outright accusations of lying and fraud. See, whether it be movie stars, athletes, influencers, or whatever the hell this was, people will always be curious with regards to the physiques that they admire, maybe even the physiques that they wish to emulate, if they are actually achieved the way they claim to be. And so on that note, I really do understand where the whole like natty or not, you know, question comes from. However, there, there, there's just one problem. And that is that this is the wrong question to ask. See, the problem with this sort of like train of thought is that it tries to take a relatively complicated situation and make it fit the form of a yes or no. Sort of like a light switch, like it's on or it's off. That's it. And instead, this is how I think we should think about this question. A probability spectrum, a natural probability spectrum, because I honestly think that this system of approaching this question from the standpoint of probability as opposed to a simple light switch scenario, this, at least in my opinion, is the best way to finally answer the question, who is actually natural? So the first variable, in a way, might be the most important one, and that is because it is going to be how we actually place an individual on the probability spectrum, sort of like a starting point. And in this scenario, I have decided on the FFMI, the Fat-Free Mass Index. It is a formula similar to the Body Mass Index, the BMI, except in this scenario, it's assuming that the individual has no body fat. Imagine we like snapped our fingers and magically made you 0% body fat. Yeah, pretty much. Then we did some, you know, little bit of arithmetic involving your height, your weight, all that stuff, and well, there you go. It was first made popular in 1995 by a paper by Corey and colleagues, although since then there have been a couple other studies and papers published, usually dealing with kind of like university and college level athletics. I actually talked about the FFMI back in my 2015 and 2016 videos on this whole like natural or not topic, and I do want to mention before we go any further that yes, I understand this is not a perfect system, it's not like a perfect be all to end all number, I just want to preface that because I can hear you guys, I already know those like keyboard warriors warming up their fingers to type me like angry essays in the comments section. Relax. I get it, it's not a perfect system, but that being said, unfortunately, it's kind of the best thing we have. Like if we're trying to objectively, mathematically answer this question. And back in 2016, like pretty much my entire assessment can be summarized with this screenshot. Essentially you've got 18, which is sort of like the average guy who pretty much doesn't even lift. 21 to 22 is a very good physique. And then once you get to like 24, 25, and especially north of that, you're really entering dicey territory where it becomes just harder and harder to believe as being attainable naturally. Now, I'm not gonna get into the specifics of every study that I have used for research in this video because honestly, that would like take two hours, but if you guys want to do so, feel free. In fact, I encourage it. I'm gonna leave links for all these studies down in the description box below. However, there is one specific quote from a study that I was researching, which I think is very relevant, and I want to show you guys. And one of the things they needed to do in the methodology for this study is they had to eliminate anybody on or suspected of on being performance enhancing drugs. And they did this in two ways. Number one, obviously, would be individuals who simply failed the test. In this case, they were testing via urine and hair samples. And the second way is they eliminated individuals, participants from the study, who breached a certain physique threshold. And specifically the cutoff, and I want to quote this from the study directly, was 25.5 in FFMI 
and simultaneously having a body fat percentage under 10%. Also, by the way, in case you're wondering, yes, there were actually participants in this study who popped positive in the urine and hair samples and were removed from the study for actually being on gear. This blew my mind because these individuals signed up for this study and continued to lie to the experimenter's face despite there being no reason. There's no money. There's no fame. There's nothing. It's just some random local university study and they're still lying. They're still technically being fake naturals. So obviously in the real world where there actually is like a hundred times more incentive because there is money, fame, social media clout, everything tied to your physique. Yeah, you can kind of see why this is a problem. Anyway, getting back on topic. So in that study, the researchers used this cutoff uh, for indication of steroid use, but there's one number in particular, and that is this, which is very important, and people always forget about this. Having a good fat-free mass index of like 24 or 25, it's not that impressive if you're some like 30% body fat power lifter at 250 pounds. The problem is, had you ever considered cutting down, and I mean cutting down to like 12, 10% body fat or maybe even less, you're probably going to lose a considerable amount of lean body mass in the process, thus decreasing your FFMI score. I think a really good example to illustrate this concept would be me. When I'm bulked up at like 200 pounds, conservatively estimating like 20% body fat, you plug my stats into a calculator and I'm like pushing 23. However, if you take my same physique, just cut down when I'm on stage on a bodybuilding show at like 8% body fat, give or take, suddenly that same FFMI is cut down dramatically, like over a full point down to around 21.5, 22, depending on body fat estimation. And that's the problem with guys doing their own FFMI calculations when they're like 25% body fat in the middle of their off season. It doesn't count. Anyway, enough of that. Let's actually jump into this probability spectrum and start working with some real numbers. So as I said earlier, the FFMI in a way is sort of the most important variable because this is actually how we establish you on the spectrum to begin with. You can sort of think of it as your starting point. And based on my knowledge and experience, I believe that having a score of around under 20 or over 26 puts you sort of at either ends of the spectrum with the middle ground being somewhere around 22 to 23. Also notice where I put these guys, those with an FFMI of around 26 or greater. It's close to zero on the spectrum, as in a 0% chance of that individual being natural, but it's not actually at zero. And this is because although incredibly rare, there are extreme and I do mean extreme, genetic anomalies out there in a world of 8 billion people. And this is just one of the reasons why, although the fat-free mass index is a useful variable to look at, as I'll mention later on in the video, it is after all just one variable to look at out of many that you can take into consideration when trying to answer this question. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Igor, how could you possibly insinuate that a physique around here, which let's be honest is good but not great, how could you be possibly saying that that has a 50-50-ish chance of being unnatural? Well, let me demonstrate. A good example, I think, would be someone I actually brought up back in my earlier videos on this topic, Christian Guzman, who I think a lot of us can admit is a true pioneer in our like fitness social media scene, and also one of my favorite guys in the industry. Now recently, Christian has been more open about his usage of anabolic steroids. I am, I am, on, I am on stuff now. Yeah, I, I don't mind talking, bro, yeah. Like I am on, and when I say stuff, I mean testosterone. The amount of testosterone that I've been doing for the last few years, has been constant, has been steady. That being said, before that, like for the last four to five years, he has still been one of the more controversial individuals in the industry because it was sort of like wishy-washy as to whether he's natural or not. And a lot of people out there, especially some of his fans, believed he was. And many people sort of defended his natural status, saying things like, well, he's not that big. 
I mean, the guy competes at like 170, maybe a buck 75 body weight at like close to six feet tall. How could you possibly assume that you need steroids to achieve that if you really think that you're weak, you're small, you're blah, blah, blah. And this, I think, really illustrates the problem with this line of thinking because not everybody who uses a little bit of PEDs or in some cases even a moderate amount is immediately going to blow up and completely catapult to the the not natural like side of this spectrum to like an FFMI of 26 plus. In the case of Christian, we have a long seasoned, competitive, not natural, high level athlete, and he's still at an FFMI of like 23, give or take. Think of it this way and get ready because you guys know I love me a good metaphor. If I were to consume one beer, would you be able to tell? Would you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I have now consumed alcohol? Is it that noticeable? Probably not. Now, what if I consumed three beers? Are you now certain that this individual has consumed alcohol? Maybe, but even then, maybe not. Because hell, maybe the guy's just really good at acting sober and holding his liquor. And finally, take someone who is absolutely hammered. This guy has taken six beers in 12 minutes with a beer funnel. Anybody with a functional set of eyes can see that, yeah, not only have you consumed alcohol, you're hammered drunk. Kind of how everybody can see that, yeah, you're probably using gear if you are actively on 12 different steroids, SARMs, uh, thermogenics, that magic spinal fluid thing from Attack on Titan. Eren, I'm sorry, but you're just too skinny. I'm gonna give you a little something and it's gonna turn you into an absolute fucking unit. Like, yeah, at this point, it just becomes obvious. I have no idea who in their right mind would continue to deny- Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Now, at this point in the video, you guys are probably wondering, okay, Igor, that's great, but this doesn't really help answer the question. In fact, it might add even more uncertainty to the whole overall problem. But fortunately, I know just how to fix that, and that is by introducing 700 other variables into this calculation, and that is exactly what we will be doing next time. But until then, guys, thank you so much for watching, especially if you have made it this far in what is probably a painfully long video. And until part two comes out, das vidanya.